When Viking ships emerge from peat bogs or seabeds with their structure still intact after a thousand years, the conclusion is, well, unavoidable. These people did not rely on luck. They understood wood at a level that allowed it to survive conditions that destroy modern construction in just a few decades. The so-called Viking wood trick was not a single treatment or secret coating. It was a disciplined system that turned timber into a long-term material by controlling moisture, biology, and time. This opening minute matters because once this system is understood, modern wood preservation starts to look unnecessarily complicated and honestly often less effective. Why did Vikings focus on moisture behavior rather than surface protection? Vikings knew that rot is not caused by water alone. Wood rots when moisture stays trapped long enough for fungi to feed and multiply. Their solution was never to seal wood completely. Instead, they ensured water could enter briefly and leave quickly. This made sustained dampness impossible. Modern sealants often fail because they trap moisture once breached. Viking wood survived because it was allowed to breathe. How timber selection made immortality possible before any tools were lifted. The process began in the forest. Vikings selected slow-grown trees from dense stands where competition forced tight annual rings. Pine, oak, and spruce grown under these conditions produced dense fibers that resisted water penetration. Fast-grown trees absorb moisture rapidly and unevenly, creating internal stress and decay pathways. Anyone applying this today should prioritize dense, old-growth-style lumber or slow-grown equivalents, rather than relying on treatment to compensate for poor material. Why did winter felling permanently reduce decay risk? Trees were felled during winter dormancy when a sap content was minimal. Sap feeds microorganisms and accelerates rot. Removing it at the source altered the chemical environment of the wood permanently. This was not superstition. Modern research confirms winter-cut timber lasts longer under exposure. Builders today can apply this by sourcing lumber harvested in dormant seasons or allowing full seasoning before use. How extended air seasoning transformed wood into a moisture regulator. Viking timber was seasoned in open air for years. Slow drying collapsed internal moisture channels gradually rather than tearing them open. The result was wood that resisted absorption while allowing vapour release. This internal balance prevented moisture accumulation. Applying this principle requires patience. Stack timber off the ground, protect it from direct rain, allow airflow, and resist the temptation to rush, drying through artificial heat. So, why was light charring one of the most misunderstood preservation techniques? Well, charring was not about burning wood to blackened ruin. It was, in fact, a controlled surface hardening. A thin char layer closed surface capillaries and made the wood hydrophobic, while still keeping the core breathable. It also, you know, discouraged insects and fungi. This technique, interestingly, remains practical today for posts, beams, and exterior wood. Just lightly scorch the surface, brush away loose char, and allow the hardened layer to remain intact. Now, how placement and elevation completed the preservation system, Viking structures rarely allowed wood to just sit in stagnant moisture. Posts rested on stones. Beams were raised, floors were elevated, and where ground contact was unavoidable, sacrificial elements were used, so decay occurred in replaceable components. Modern builders often bury treated wood and, well, hope chemistry solves the problem.
Vikings solved it with geometry and gravity. And why was airflow treated as essential infrastructure? Longhouses, shipsheds, and storage buildings were all designed to move air continuously. Walls allowed vapor escape. Roofs vented moisture. Subfloors breathed. Moisture that entered had a clear exit path. This denied fungi the stable, damp environment they require. Applying this today means, you know, designing ventilation behind cladding, under floors, and around joints, instead of sealing everything airtight. How joinery prevented hidden moisture traps. Viking joinery allowed movement without splitting. Pegged joints expanded and contracted naturally. Splits, as you might guess, invite moisture deep into wood where decay begins unseen. Minimizing rigid fasteners and allowing wood to move dramatically extends lifespan. This principle applies equally to furniture, buildings, and outdoor structures. Now why do ships provide the clearest proof of the system's success? Viking ships were constantly wet, yet they survived. Their planks swelled when wet and shrank when dry without cracking. Tar was used selectively, not as a sealant, but as a watershedding aid combined with breathable construction. The system worked because no single element was expected to do everything. So, how do you apply the Viking wood system today? Choose dense timber. Season it properly. Harden exposed surfaces. Elevate wood from ground moisture. Design for airflow, protect from above, and really accept that longevity comes from systems, not products. This is why Viking wood seems immortal. It was never sealed into silence. It was allowed to live, breathe, and dry. If you value historically proven knowledge over modern marketing, subscribe to Ancient Know How. Share this guide with serious builders and history enthusiasts and help keep these enduring techniques in active use rather than forgotten legend.